And hello, we are back. This is Philip Steiger at TheBest3D.com and we are going to talk about some new features that are coming into version 9.1 that's currently in beta under development. PD Howler um, version 9.1 has a couple of minor tweaks and changes in the interface and a couple of things that may be uh, rather major. But um, one thing that you'll see particularly interesting, I think, um, for the power users, uh, especially those who do animation, uh, but actually also for still images, is the filter, uh, the GPU accelerated version of the Puppy Ray Ray Tracer. So what basically that does is that to create an animation like this with the full uh, final render quality, instead of taking hours, it may take just seconds or minutes. And that depends a bit on the type of graphics uh, processing unit you have, graphic card, graphic chip, depending on how, sp how fast that is and how much faster than your a regular CPU, uh, you'll find that it can, uh, it can create some animations really quickly. And so I wanted to show you how to do something like this, for instance. And um, let's start from scratch. I'm going to simply create uh, an animation that's going to be targeting uh, 8, 640 by 360 in this case. And you see it's erased to white by default. I'm going to change that, uh, flip it to black and erase it to black and then create an animation that's going to be, let's say we wanted 99 frames long. So that's going to be, or exactly 90 frames, why not? Let's do 90 frames, so exactly 3 seconds long if we play it at 30 frames a second. All right, so that comes to 90 frames total. We can check the FPS here, the frames per second, to make sure it is at 30. And of course, right now, if we scrub through that, or if we play it, there is just nothing uh, animated, because all frames are copies of that original black frame. But I'm going to change that now with a filter among the animated series. Uh, we could take the neutrons, we could take the... St let's take the st uh, Starry Night. We haven't played with that for a while. Uh, remember, we have <laughs> the speed at which we can dive into that uh, space warp. Um, we have some glow, some softness. Um, the number of count, the number of stars, the star count, um, whatever it is. Let's make it uh, somewhat sparse, not too dense, and the star size uh, fairly small. And let's go do that. Okay, so render that across. That's always been a fairly fast and highly optimized animation. Actually, not always. This was, I think, in version nine also some speed optimization. So maybe eight point two. But uh, now we have this animation, and we're going to use that um, as actually maybe just one frame of that first to to see. Well, let's go save that. We might need to go back to that. So let's go save it. Um, as a, well, it's not going to be a PCB, but let's just save it here very quickly. Um, Starry1. And that's a, a quick memory dump, doesn't ask any questions, just dumps the whole byte buffer, uh, RGB values, and some header inf information indicating the size, uh, the width, and the height. So it's a fairly large file, potentially, if you have a long animation or large dimensions, but um, it's going to be a very quick one to save and quick to restore. So if you, know, if you accidentally erase it or do something to it, you can go and open that and <coughs> load it right there, and in a heartbeat, you're back in that um, that animation. All right, so now what I'd like to do is select this animation um, for actually this starting image under the transform now in on the puppy ray. What we'll do here is we're, we're comparing the two puppy rays now. There's, there's the original CPU version, <coughs> which is a little bit more featured, has uh, more a couple of more features that are not yet in the alternative, but the alternative is catching up quite nicely with some great usability and use features here. So that one is called puppy ray GPU the graphics processor unit. Let me show you the two just to compare. So CPU would do something like this. You have a little preview here. It's pretty dark. I guess that's because it's the black colors there underneath it. Uh, if I change the fog, maybe I can get a little bit more here. I don't know where my sun went. I must have uh, moved it away somewhere. Um, I guess maybe I could make it brighter and move it around. Maybe I get to see it again. Um, <coughs> you'll see th this is this is the standard uh, way of using uh, Puppy Ray, which is to to select your view and then select the quality of the render, let's say uh, medium or high quality, and then ray trace it. Right. And it takes, I don't know, three, four seconds for this one frame. If you go through the entire animation, you know it's going to take quite a while to render that. Um, <coughs> so here's the alternative. Let's go and undo that. And the alternative is basically to use the GPU. So you have a puppy ray 
with GPU use. And right uh, from the beginning, one thing you notice is that it not only shows you a preview, and it's a little bit larger, it's a slightly larger preview, but it also shows it to you actually rendered in the full image. So it, it renders it not only here in the preview, but it renders it for the full view. And you can directly animate, you can scrub through that in this preview, but it's actually rendering it through the, CP through the GPU directly and uh, you see it in full screen uh, or whatever the size of the image here is. And this is right now final quality, final render. If I go to lower quality, it's even faster. I easily get like 40 or 50 frames a second here. Um, and high quality, still awesome, very smooth. And only if you have a very, very large image or you have the distance go really far and it tiles those, you know, remember how it's tiling if you have the fog far away here it's tiling it really far, uh, that's potentially going to take a little bit longer. But still, look at that, fully interactive. It's not necessarily real time, not 30 frames a second, but it's interactive enough that you can use it to really nicely fine tune your image. And then just switch to final render and you're done. Um, you, you even have uh, this one here that <laughs> hours would seem like days, right? Uh, the ray trace CPU version takes quite typically hours to render at that level. This is a very, very high quality rendering. Well, here we're still in interactive mode. Um, takes about one or half a second or so to render. So now again, that depends on the GPU you have. Mine uh, is a graphics card by NVIDIA and it's not the latest and greatest anymore by a long shot. I mean, this laptop I'm running on has the second generation of the Intel i7 processor, you will probably have something significantly faster on the GPU as well. And so, you know, this is, this is one of the uh, really fascinating things that we can do with the GPU to get your graphics to, to your 3D graphics to just pop up and be done. You know, you don't have to go wait and click and render and go get a coffee overdose or something. Uh, th this, is, uh, this is going to be very productive. And so what I can do now is say, uh, for instance, I want to start from this vantage point here on my animation. So I make sure I, I am here at the beginning and keep frame that and check this. I'm going to go fly into this, uh, perhaps change my angle a little bit like so, fly into it, um, maybe change my position. Let's see, I want to fly into it like so. Okay. And then uh, keyframe that and then go and go to the last position over here and uh, change my angle to the right, look to the right and perhaps uh, tilt it like so, get a little bit more of the sky. And in fact, maybe I want to change the sky to the sunset. Where's my sun? Let's see if we can find, locate the sun here somewhere. It's probably always, yeah, there it is on the other side. There you go. Let's go nice sunset view and uh, move in a little bit more. It would be this way. There you go kind of disappear into it. Okay, yeah, that's good enough. And let's keyframe that. And so we now have a sequence of positions that will do this kind of animation. Well, we don't see it in the preview here as we go, except when we stop, it shows perhaps if we did a render at the last one here. Uh, anyway, so at this point we can go uh, perhaps choose the render quality. I'm gonna go with uh, medium. Uh, or maybe uh, high quality. You know, sometimes you don't need to have it at the highest uh, final render because uh, you may end up doing some more post work and blur it. Maybe this is going to be a background that's not actually going to be uh, crisp and in focus. Maybe you're going to have a spaceship fly in front of it or a UFO landing or something. And in, in the end, you just don't need this at the very highest quality at least not all the time. So uh, think about whether you really need to spend another second on that rendering. And I'm not talking hours and minutes here. Now check this out. I'm going to go and say, yes, render it. And there it is. Every frame is being regenerated. Every scene is being regenerated. And the scene is being rendered by the GPU. Uh, and it takes about half a second per frame here. And it varies depending on scene complexity, on the orientation. And there you go. So that entire animation, the time to render this entire animation will take probably less than a minute. And that's uh, one of the great new features in uh, Dog Waffle 9.1 Howler coming out uh, probably in December. Um, we're shooting for sometimes in December 2013. 
And there we are, uh, done. And let's go fl fly through this. All right, let's go make it full screen. Yeah, it's a bit big, right? It's a little bit fast, uh, but I mean that's the whole idea. So you can, you know, sometimes you do this not just not necessarily to actually finish with an animation. Uh, sometimes you do that because you you don't quite know which angle is going to be the best, right? And so you do multiple renderings. You do renderings at different views, at different angles. Like let's say from here to here, you see one of these is going to be the catching your eye, and you say, "Oh, I love this one. Let's use, let's work with this one, right?" So at that point, you'll uh, copy that, store this image, uh, you'll free the animation. We don't need it anymore, and uh, <coughs> make sure we have this image in here now, and then we can do whatever we need to do with that. Maybe uh, some more um, light diffusion or soft contrast improvement, right, to get give it a little bit more mood and perhaps a little bit of uh, let's see what else we got here some light diffusion so the bright stuff will kind of bleed into the darker areas and then perhaps even some of the blur mystic vision blur that could come from the sun right here and do a little bit of a uh, mystic vision high quality blur <coughs> and put it right there where the sun is and perhaps uh, the level we can change, the quality. Uh, we can also undo that a little bit if it's too strong. So that's the interactive undo. And say, okay, just give it a hint a little bit of that, right? And there you go. So now we have that. And that's, so that's really uh, the idea with this GPU version is that it's going to get you there really, really fast. Um, it's not going to have every feature that the CPU version has. Um, you know, for instance, uh, well, it doesn't do the ray tracing because it basically does it on the GPU. It renders it on the GPU. It doesn't do the sky uh, illumination yet. Um, there's some, some little details that are a little bit different, but uh, some of it, it will do better and some of it, it will, be, it will certainly be much faster. And so, uh, you know, if you need a quick idea, something tested, let's do just one more, this time for a single static image. Um, let's go store this image. Let's, let's start with a larger image. Uh, this time we'll make it twice the size. So 1280 by 720. And uh, let's go and render something like a brick texture or a star field grid. Let's get the grid here. Okay, let's start with that. All right, and let's go and simply just blindly jump right in here and say uh, puppy ray GPU. All right, so you notice here it's um, it's got the same view that we had before. It's still on the final render. I'm going to go into medium quality here to look at it in an interactive way and then perhaps uh, change the angle a little bit and we can change the, the fog distance, bring it up closer. Um, and you know, at this time we can actually certainly go with higher quality rendering, perhaps final render. And you know, there's, there's all sorts of different things you can do with that uh, to create some new patterns. Uh, let's go and move up a little bit. There you go. And ray trace it. Well, no, there's no ray tracing needed. It's it's all done, right? <laughs> so now, uh, so this this is how quickly we did that. Just experimenting, and you know, as we looked at it, it actually rendered the final image. Um, it was just done. And uh, one one of the things to explore, by the way, that I really like uh, is to just see where it takes us. If we take that image now, let, let's go to store that. Okay, we, or we may want to save it even to a file, but let's store it at least here as an image uh, snapshot. Uh, but we can go to uh, transform puppy ray again and see what that happens with that now. So at this point, I'm uh, looking at sort of an iterative, not a recursive, but an iterative ray tracing. Basically, I'm ray tracing over the you know or, uh, the first ray tracing, and sometimes that just generates really interesting uh, images. Uh, let's go see if I can zoom out here a little bit, and so create some some new patterns or some some fascinating. Uh, just stuff, you know, just really interesting. Uh, there you go, let's make this the final render. It already is, okay? So let's go store that one. And we've got the second one, there you go. And let's go do it a third time. So let's go render that, transform one more time into puppy ray again. And this one, oh, we're starting to get dark here. Let's go bring the altitude down a little bit. Let's scale it also in one axis and the other axis. 
There's always some really fascinating results when we experiment with that. Maybe a different color, maybe a little bit cooler, greenish here on the fog. Um, the sun, I have no idea where the sun even went. Um, let's go and play with the fog a little bit. Oh, that's dark. Uh, let's go and look around. Yes. Oh, there's a sun here somewhere. Look at that. How's that for epic? Alright. And give it perhaps a little bit of a tilt. There you go. So, uh, maybe the fog. We can see if we can get the fog to reveal a little bit more on the front there. Because if we move it back too far... Well, that looks interesting too. So anyway, that's, um, that's it for a quick intro to working in real time with ray tracing. Uh, thanks to the wonderful GPU edition of Puppy Ray coming in PD Howler 9.1. Thank you. 